Hello, hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. It is so very good to be here with each and every one of you as we gather together today to celebrate the magnificence and significance of the presence and power of God operating in, through, and as us, and through, and as you. And it is a beautiful thing to know that, to recognize and know that God is in us, the divine, the holy, the sacred, the beautiful is present in, through, and as us. And as we deepen our awareness of that reality, powerful and amazing things begin to happen in our lives. Let us begin with prayer, and we will begin by anchoring ourselves with a word from the daily word. The word today is prayer, and the affirmation, I feel the presence and power of God as I pray. In the revealing word, Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore described prayer as the most highly accelerated mind action known. This awareness is my comfort and assurance as I release my worldly concerns and feel the presence of God. As I pray, I immerse myself in the silence so I can be still and know. From this place of deep communion, I relax and focus my attention on the divine ideas of life, love, wisdom, strength, and order, which are always mine to claim. As these spiritual truths flourish in my consciousness, thoughts of my troubles and worries fade from my mind. In the past, I may have believed prayer was a way of asking God for help and solace. Now I understand it as one of the best ways of helping and uplifting myself. The scripture, be still and know that I am God, Psalm 4610. And again, the affirmation, I feel the presence and power of God as I pray. So let's feel that presence. Let's feel that power within us right here and now. If you had not have already done so, I invite you to close your eyes. And we bring the focus of our attention here and now by taking a conscious breath in through your nose and a conscious breath out from your mouth. 
feeling into the present presence. We breathe in through our nose and we breathe out from our mouths. Again, we take a conscious breath in and a conscious breath out. The past is gone, the future is yet to come. We are here now. We are here now. We are here now. God is here now. God is here now. Love is here now. Love is here now. For there is only one mind, only one power, only one presence that is working in all, through all, and as all, working in us, through us, and as us, working in you, through you, and as you, working in me, through me, and as me. There is one life. That life is God. That life is whole, perfect, and complete. That life is good, and that life is your life now. That life is my life now. That life is our life now, for it is the thing that is back of, behind, and underneath all things. It is the principle that expresses and manifests into physical reality. It is the mountain. It is the sea. It is the river. It is the ocean. It is the grass. It is the bee. It is you. It is me. It is everything at all times, for it is omnipresence constantly encountered. It is everywhere and everything. There is no spot, no place, no spot where God is not. We breathe into that reality today because that means that anything we could ever need God to show up as in through and as our life, it's already here. The healing you seek is here. The ease you seek is here. The rest you seek is here. The empathy and compassion you seek is here. The riches and abundance that you seek, they are here, right here and right now. And it starts with each and every one of us. It starts with each and every one of us realizing that we are one with it and that it is within us. And we bring forth the gold. We bring forth the healing. We bring forth the wisdom. We bring forth the guidance. We bring forth the clarity that is within us. For we recognize that we are one with God and one of God, individualized, particularized, undivided expressions of the all in all. We may look up to the sky and marvel at the moon. We may look up at the sky and marvel at the sun. We may look up at the sky and marvel at the stars. Beloved, I invite you now to realize that that which you look up to and marvel is you in another form. We are one with all. And so it is out of this awareness that I speak this word in faith, I speak this word of truth, I speak this word of expectation. We have gathered together with intention. We have gathered together to get definite with the infinite. We have gathered together to move on up a little higher and dig a little deeper into our awareness of who and whose we are. We know that we are worthy. We know that we are sinless. We declare that we are fearless. We know that we are loved beyond measure. And as we know this truth, we, we endeavor to live this truth. We endeavor to let this be the reality at every level of our being, at every cell in our body and in our consciousness. For where our minds go, our lives must go. So it is with joy and thanksgiving I now release this prayer. I release it back into the law, which is always in operation, always responding and always becoming according to the vibration that we offer it. We offer a vibration of love, a vibration of worthiness, a vibration of healing. We offer a vibration of abundance and prosperity. We offer a vibration of harmony and community. We offer a vibration of good. And so it shall be. From this place of awareness, we lift up our voices with gratitude and say amen. Amen. Ashe. Ashe. And so it is. So it is. And so it is. Yes, yes. Well, hello again, beautiful people. Happy Sunday. It's wonderful to be back here again with you on a wonderful Sunday morning. Uh, we trust that all is well with you and your life, and we're grateful that you have uh, chosen to be here, to tap into this vibration, to expand your awareness, to deepen your consciousness mm -hmm. and your knowing uh, as we gather together for the weekend service. If this is your first time here, hello, welcome. We're grateful that something or someone brought you here. It could have been the YouTube or Facebook algorithm, or it may be that someone invited you, however you uh, got here, it's all good because we recognize that there are no mistakes. We recognize that there's a reason that you are here today. And so we want to say hello and welcome to each and every one of you. You can feel free to shout yourself out in the comments. Let us know where you're connecting in from. Uh, we have folks connecting in from all over the world, and you may find uh, that someone is, is watching uh, right from your home country, city, or state. But what's most important is that 
we want you to know that we believe that you will receive something today, that you will hear something today that will support you in living an empowered life and thriving throughout your week. Now, the information you see on your screen is how you access the digital connection card. This is your way to stay in touch with us and for us to stay in touch with you. All you have to do is text welcome to the phone number you see on your screen, 347-472-1078. You'll also notice uh, on YouTube or Facebook in this post, there's a link. So if you're outside of the U.S., you can click that link and this will take you to the same place. And what you need to do there is just fill out the information. Uh, if you're texting, you receive a link, click that link enter the information. The most important piece is your email address. If you don't add anything else, your email address is what's needed. And then you'll be on our mailing list. You'll receive any correspondence that we send out throughout the week. We do send out a, a newsletter that goes out every Friday. And you'll see uh, some of the things that we'll share in the news up and updates in a few moments are echoed in, in that email. And you're going to want to have some of that information there uh, in your email so that you can access it later. You'll see what I'm talking about. But what's most important is uh, we're happy that you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So this is a wonderful moment, wonderful opportunity for us to move forward with the news and updates so that we can tap into uh, the vibration of meditation, tap into the music and the message. It is the third Sunday, which means it is God Talk Sunday. We encourage you to join us for the God Talk, which will be happening following service today at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What is the God Talk? The God Talk is your opportunity to ask questions. There is no question, no question is uh, off limits. We talk about any and everything because we recognize that most of this path, when you come to this path, and even as you deepen your understanding of this path, uh, this new thought metaphysical path is an unlearning and you need to ask questions. You need to learn how to actually apply these principles to the real experiences of your life. And so PY and I make ourselves available every third Sunday of the month to answer those questions. It could be something that you heard us say in a, in a service and during the meditation experience or in a sermon or something you heard in a song or something you may have read from uh, an author, a book we recommended or uh, or just another new thought teacher. And so we uh, created this space intentionally to support you in thriving in this way and to be able to have real talk conversations. But of course, in order to ask the question, you have to be in the space. And so the Zoom link and password is shared uh, with everyone on our mailing list. It's in the, the weekly email that goes out on Fridays. For those that are just joining us and you may not be on the mailing list, you will see the information again, uh, how to join our mailing list. If you text welcome uh, to that number, 347-472-1078, and complete the information. Once you've successfully completed that information, you'll receive uh, an email with the God Talk link and password. Uh, so we look forward to uh, seeing many of you there uh, later on today as we um, have a little talk with God about God and in God and, and, and really expand our awareness. I guarantee you, and you all can shout out in the comments, those of you that have attended and, and attend regularly, uh, it's a transformative experience. And uh, as you bring yourself, what I've witnessed over and over again, those that bring themselves to the God Talk month after month, uh, there is exponential growth. Uh, there's a powerful thing that happens um, as you continue to deepen your awareness through the conversations or just being present in the space. So we encourage to see y'all there. Next Sunday is the fourth Sunday, and every fourth Sunday is Healing Sunday. We have made the decision to be uh, even more intentional about healing at CSC, and so we are setting aside a specific time uh, in our fourth Sunday service for a spiritual mind treatment around healing and really just bringing that in intention uh, to the fourth Sunday each and every week. So we encourage you, those of you that are seeking healing in any uh, way, shape, or form to make sure that you're in the space and connected on that Sunday. Uh, if you know those that uh, are seeking healing in, through, and as their lives, invite them to come to this service. And it's really about the entire service. Uh, yes, you can send out the prayer, uh, and that's fine and wonderful, uh, but it's really about the entire intention of the service. Uh, as I shared last month, one of the things that inspired this for me 
uh, was knowing that uh, at United Palace, Reverend Ike uh, had a specific section, a healing section uh, in, the, in the sanctuary. And there were many, many stories of folks that just sat in the space that experienced healing. At CSC, when we were holding in-person services, one of the things that our prayer champions did each and every Sunday was bless every chair, to speak a word over each and every person, not knowing who that person may be that would sit in that chair. And so we want to continue that vibration in this way, in this context. And so every fourth Sunday is Healing Sunday. Invite someone to be here with us and come with the intention of holding space within the community. If you're not seeking healing, we're, we're, we're creating a container together. And for those that are seeking healing in any way, shape, or form, uh, come to receive, come to be blessed, come to be transformed. Every Wednesday morning, we gather together at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Momentum Prayer Call. The Momentum Prayer Call is a wonderful way to continue the momentum that we create here on Sundays. It's also a wonderful way to intentionally start your day in the middle of the week. It's a, uh, about a 10-minute call. Uh, we gather together. Of course, you know, we start right on time at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We share a reading. We pray and we move on with our day. If you're not able to make the call live, it's all good. You can use the playback number, enter the access code and wait, and the most recent prayer will play. All the prayers are recorded. Now, if you have a prayer request, you can send that prayer request to prayerchampions at celebrationsc.org. We will know the truth with you. We are holding uh, the entire community in our hearts and our minds, knowing only the best for you. Uh, but we recognize that you may have a specific prayer request for something uh, that's taking place in your life, or you may want to submit the name of someone you know, a loved one, a neighbor, a friend. It's all good. Uh, send that in to the email address and release, cast that burden on the mind of God and go free. And of course, let us know as your prayer is answered, let us know as there's a shift that happens, let us know as there's a miracle that happens, how prayer is operating in, through, and as your lives. Every month we highlight a series and this month we're going back uh, to 2017 or 2018 of April, Who is Jesus to Me? As this is Easter month, I think that this series is, is and can be very impactful for you. That series starts with Reimagine Easter, which is a wonderful sermon. And there's also an Earth Day sermon in there, Give Us This Day. There's some wonderful things uh, happening in there, supporting you in <clears throat> deciding who Jesus is to you. We're not here to tell you what to believe about Jesus or even to believe in Jesus or accept Jesus. Jesus doesn't have to be one of your teachers. There are plenty, plenty of true teachers out here. Uh, that have that have walked the planet um, and that have taught the truth in many different ways. But it's important that you have a healthy understanding of who and what uh, the master teacher, our elder brother Jesus is. And so I offer some different perspectives to support you in doing that. You can find this on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's on the homepage of our YouTube channel. Finally, we encourage you always to share, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you can share this stream uh, on uh, any platform that you desire. We also encourage you to uh, like and comment, and also any posts that you see throughout the week, share, like, and comment. If you subscribe, then of course you'll get the notifications when anything is posted or when anything is coming up uh, as we may schedule other, other videos or streams uh, throughout the months. We appreciate your support. Uh, because, of course, that continues to bring more attention to this good thing we have going on at Celebration Spiritual Center. And that completes our news and updates for this Sunday, which means it is time. It's time, y'all, for the meditation experience with Pastor Yolanda. Ah, yes, yes, it is time for the meditation experience. We knew that we wanted to provide a place where you learned about God, but we also knew that it was important for you to feel God within yourself, for yourself. And meditation is the way to do that. And so we take time every Sunday to go within to affirm something that is true in this year, to think about those thoughts that reinforce the understanding that we were born worthy, we were born 
in a certain way for prosperity, for health, for everything to come to us. We don't have to struggle. We don't have to grind. And we don't have to worry about being sinners, being saved by grace. We are grace incarnate. And so this month, we're talking specifically about light. And I love how uh, PG just said, you may look up at the moon and marvel. You may look up at the sun and marvel. You may marvel at the stars. But what you see is a reflection of you. For you are the light. And that light that is in those things that you marvel at, those people that you marvel at, is also reflected in you. God's light, nor your light, is ever dimmed because we don't see it, because we don't focus on it. In these bodies, things happen. They happen in our bodies, to our bodies, around our bodies. And we sometimes shift our focus to the unwanted, change the fact that you are light, I am light, that we are all light. And so this month, we're gonna practice affirming We're going to feel the light within ourselves. We're going to relax into the knowing that there is nothing that we could do that would dim, diminish, extinguish that light. So go ahead. Let's prepare. Look around the room. Notice where you are. Seated upright in a chair on your sofa. Feet are planted on the floor allowing that soft contact of the feet to the floor and knowing that that energy that is permeating up through the core of the earth is now moving through your body, that that light that is shining so brightly this morning on the earth, wherever you are, clouds or otherwise, the light is there. Plant the palms on the tops of the thighs And take a moment just to settle in, allowing the shoulders to relax over the hips. And notice where you are. Look around the room. Remember that you are safe and that you are present. Go ahead and allow the eyelids to close. That soft, subtle movement of closing the eyelids Noticing the breath, slowing way down, signals our nervous system to activate the parasympathetic, the peace that is always there, and to summon the light. Take a few minutes to notice the breath. the breath that flows, that same energy of the breath moving in and out. Whether it appears to be a deep, full breath right now, or what appears in your mind to be a shallow breath, it really matters not. For the breath is moving just like the breeze on the ocean, the breeze in the trees or the tall grass. Anywhere that that air and that energy is flowing on the planet, it is moving through you and it is called by your light to activate, to relax, enliven, and release anything that would prevent you from feeling the light and knowing that you are the light. And beautiful everyone, let's now take our focus of attention, our awareness, our energy, collectively and send it low into the belly. And for a count of four, we're gonna inhale together Hold for a count of four and then exhale for a count of four and then just relax, count of four. Let's begin. Inhale. Hold. 
Hold for count to four. Open the mouth and sigh it out for a count of four. And settle in. Again, inhale, expand the low belly, making more room for breath. And hold for a count of four. And open the mouth, relax the jaw. Without collapsing the body, release the breath, release the sound. In through the low belly and up through the rib cage, expanding the sides of the rib cage. Count to four. Hold the breath. And release the breath. Sigh it out. Letting go any moment preceding this. and rest. In through the low belly, up through the rib cage, expanding the sides and now the front and the back. Sending that breath to the back body, to the front body and hold. And sigh it out when you're ready. and relax. In through the low belly, up through the rib cage, now allowing that breath and energy to rise to the heart chakra center of the chest. And when you reach that heart chakra, hold. And release. In through the low belly, up through the rib cage, and allowing the energy and the healing and the knowingness of light to rise to the heart. Hold it there. And again, without collapsing the body, stay open, release the breath. And receive the rest. And let's practice a few rounds of this inhale and exhale, deep, full, complete, relaxing breath in and all the way up. And when you reach the top, close the lips and slow it down even more, exhaling for a count of six, out through the nostrils. For this will be our form of breath work in and out through the nostrils, slowing it down, feeling, allowing the light to make its path through the body on the breath. Beautiful, everyone. Now let's send this breath into the feet, this relaxation and the motivation to experience the light within you into the feet. Maybe you wiggle the toes, raise the heels, whatever it does to, whatever you need to release any tension, relax the feet. And we're gonna send that energy now up through the soles of the feet across the ankles, relax the ankles. Energy flows across the shins now, the calves now. 
we send breath and relaxation, relax the shins and the calves. Now this energy flows across the knees. Relax the knees. Allowing the energy to flow across the thighs, the glutes, the hamstrings. If you notice any tension, release the breath. Relax the thighs, the glutes, the hamstrings. And go ahead and release the lower half of your body now. Where you are seated is the energy of God. It can hold you. It can support you. And more importantly, it is here to remind you, I am and you are the light. This energy gathered at the base of the spine makes its way up now, inhaling, exhaling, and allowing the energy to flow in and up. Exhale and allow and up, exhale, and allow, and inhale through the nostrils, exhaling through the nostrils and allowing that kundalini to rise, that light and that power to make its way up and up and out the crown of your head. We marvel at the stars. We imagine that light above us all now. Let it flow back down through the crown, across the third eye, down the throat, softly landing on the shoulders, flowing down the arms and out the fingertips. Go ahead and scan your body. Notice right now if there's still any tension, any holding, any thought that would dim this energy and this light within you. Send the love there and the breath there and the affirmative truth that I am the light, you are the light. Nothing can stop it. It is always there. We imagine it shining brightly in every cell, every muscle, every fiber, every organ, and every aspect of our life. I will monitor the time. You take the inward journey. If the mind wanders, it's okay. When you become aware, lovingly, gently, compassionately, bring yourself back to the affirmative truth. I am the light. Let that light fill you completely, relax you in every way possible. I am the light, you are the light. We are the light, now.
with our eyelids still closed, feeling contentment on the inside, feeling the light that cannot be extinguished on the inside. We just settle in to the power that we are with our eyelids still closed. We release anything that would prevent us from remembering, walking as, and magnetizing more light to us. Let us begin now to make the return. If the palms are turned up, turn them down, go ahead. Inhale and draw the shoulders up by the ears. Exhale, releasing the shoulder blades back and down. Inhale, drawing the shoulders up by the ears. Exhaling as we release the shoulder blades back and down. Sending that heart and that energy up. Inhale. Exhale, releasing the shoulder blades back and down, back body and front body aligned. Stop the movement. Bring the palms together at heart center. Bow the chin towards the fingertips and notice that opening at the base of the neck and all the way down the spine. Breathing it in bowing in honor of this time that we've given ourselves, bowing in honor of this light that we are. Allow the eyelids to often open gently, soft and gentle. Nice, easy gaze. Inhale, raise the chin, raise the gaze, release the breath, maintain the peace. Namaste. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful namaste. As a reminder, the meditation airs again every Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we are building a wonderful playlist this year of the meditations from each weekend service uh, so that you have uh, more convenient access to the meditations. And of course, you can share individual meditations as you would like or uh, share the entire playlist with, with someone that you I uh, think would, would be able to take advantage of the powerful way that PY continues to lead and guide us, deepen our understanding of meditation and deepen our experience of meditation. Thank you, PY. You're welcome. Well, we are in the second week of our series, Welcome to the Spiritual Path. I'm excited uh, to continue as we move through this, this series this month. Um, but of course, before we get into the message, we're going to tap into the music. So we'll hear from Soul 21 in just a moment. And then I will be with you on the other side with today's message, Forgive and Forget. I'll see you on the other side. I thought this song was appropriate uh, because it speaks to healing, healing of uh, racial tension, healing of division, healing of separation. And one of the things that I love to think about is whatever it is that we want in our world, we have to declare it. We have to decide and say that it is now. And yes, there's much going on on our planet and there's much going on that, that would suggest that there's not healing going on. But when I consider that Celebration Spiritual Center exists, 
when I consider that there are other communities and spaces like this that exist, that we represent the beloved community, coming together and healing the division, that tells me that there's a healing going on. Because if we exist, we become the example, we become the lighthouse for the rest of the world. So I invite you to affirm with us that there's a healing going on. A healing within, a healing in our nation, a healing on our planet. As we speak, so it shall be.
Mm, mm, mm. Oh, my, my, my. Mother, Father, God. There's a healing going on. Shout out to our dear brother, Jamie Lula, for that powerful song. And of course, shout out to Soul 21, the CSC band, uh, as we put our special seasoning on it uh, and do it like only CSC does it. It is so wonderful to be here with each and every one of you. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is where you are, it is good. I was remembering and recognizing that this is the final Sunday of winter in 2024. Uh, Tuesday is the first day of spring, and so we are uh, lovingly and joyfully um, ushering in a, a new season, a new vibration, an awakening uh, as the earth begins to laugh in flowers. It's a wonderful time to be aware, awake, and alive, and I am grateful to be here with each and every one of you. Let us begin, as we always do, by centering ourselves uh, with a prayer to ground ourselves with receptivity. And so I invite you to affirm these words after me. I welcome the spirit of truth into my mind and let it grow in my heart. Thank you, God, in me, through me, and as me. Amen. Ashe. And so it is. And so it is. Well, we are in our series. This is the second week. Welcome to the Spiritual Path. This is a series that builds on uh, where we've been all, all year in this quarter, starting in January with My Biggest Dream and February with The Gospel According to Reverend Ike. And the Spiritual Path, then, is the path that we're on. As you have accepted uh, the realities and the truths of you can be, do, or have anything. And there's a reason for that. There's an unlimited, omnipotent uh, power uh, that, that dwell, infinite power that dwells in through and as you, and you are one with it. You have uh, knowingly or unknowingly accepted this spiritual path. And so there's some things that you must know as you're on this path uh, so that you can have success with the things that you have been doing intentionally since January. And so we started last week uh, by grounding ourselves with the sermon, it ain't for the week. And what I said in that sermon is that when I say it ain't for the week, I'm saying that it ain't for the undisciplined. It ain't for the wishy-washy, the indecisive, the inconsistent. This path is not for magical thinking. It's not for the masses and it's not for heroes and messiahs. And we started then to delve into what does it mean to be disciplined? What does that word even mean? As we look at the root, of the word disciple, we recognize that a disciple is a student, a learner, and a thinker. And we talked a lot about what it then means to uh, have discipline on, on this path as we continue to demonstrate and manifest and endeavor to indeed be, do, or have anything that we desire for all things are possible. And so one of the things I said in the conclusion of last week's sermon, and it may have caught your ear or it may not have, I said, we have to embrace the principle of forgiveness and endeavor to follow peace with all because of what it means to us and our success, not the perpetrator. Success on this spiritual path or becoming a successful or masterful metaphysician requires a full understanding and practice of forgiveness. There's, there's no way to, to, to get around it, right? And, um, you know, we start with the, <laughs> with the sexy, right? We start with the tantalizing. We start with that which will draw you in. All things are possible. We start with you can write down what you want and focus on it morning, noon, and night and um, bring those things into being. Uh, and so we get you in the space, but then there's some things that you have to understand and begin to practice to actually make these things a reality in your life. And so when I think about forgiveness, uh, we're, we're going to delve into a bunch of things. But there are two spiritual laws or principles that forgiveness rests upon. And I think this is important to highlight as we begin, because often forgiveness is, is thought of and taught as uh, a kind or nice thing to do, a good thing to do, a moral thing to do, a spiritual thing to do, uh, that you are um, the bigger person if you're able to do that, or you're evolved if you're able to forgive. And I want to just, just remove all of that 
right? Because forgiveness is not about morality. Forgiveness is not about kindness. It's definitely not about being nice. It's not about any of those things. Forgiveness is another expression of spiritual law and principle. And so two of the things that forgiveness rests upon is one, as you give, you receive. Shout out to the Affirmative Prayer Mastermind, because we were talking about this in class on Wednesday. And for those of you, I know there are some that uh, missed the, the registration deadline. You weren't able to make the class. The next round is going to be starting soon, and we will be announcing the start date. Uh, so make sure that you sign up early uh, and, and reserve your seat so that you're ready. We, we will be offering this once a quarter. But again, forgiveness rests on two principles. As you give, you receive. And another principle Nature abhors a vacuum. Now, I'm sure we're all familiar with the words of the Lord's Prayer, and particularly this particular uh, passage of the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts or forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our debtors or those who trespassed against us. And that line in the Lord's Prayer, this simply reflects the reciprocal nature of forgiveness, that as we are able uh, and willing to forgive ourselves and others, we are able then to receive forgiveness and grace from others. And so that echoes this principle of as we give, we receive, right? We, we know and we talk about and we practice that principle uh, often, and most often, I guess, when it relates to finances, because we talk about that all the time during giving every, every Sunday at CSC, as we give, we receive. Forgiveness operates uh, by that same principle. In fact, Give is in the word forgiveness. And I think we often miss this important aspect. By law, when we give, we must receive, this is true for money, love, time, and also forgiveness. I want to take you to the, the, the text, Raymond Hollowell, working with the law in the law of receiving, he writes this, giving, which is the first or fundamental law of life, is the first law of all creation. The attitude of getting is the law of life in a congested or repressed action. So understanding this reality that forgiveness is a practice of this first fundamental law of life, uh, the opposite of forgiveness then uh, creates a congested state and then is repressed action. He goes on further in the text. We are working with a law that is definite and active, and this is only the beginning of our work. The principle of life upon which this law is based is clearly written. And of course, this is, these are the words uh, attributed to Jesus. It reads, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Giving always precedes and predetermines the reception, whether you are giving your thought, your word, your service, or your deed. So when we talk about forgiveness, taking it away, stripping it away from this idea of morality, stripping it away from this idea of kindness, stripping it away from this idea of niceness, what we understand is that we are actually practicing the law of giving and receiving. We are practicing circulation. We are practicing as we give, we receive, and giving always precedes and predetermines the reception. So as you have been spending time uh, this quarter in January and February of writing down what it is that you want and reading what it is that you want, uh, we recognize that a giving is necessary uh, uh, as you are willing and ready to receive, whether you're giving your thought, your word, your service, or your deed, or your forgiveness. And related to this is the metaphysical and scientific truth that nature abhors a vacuum. Physically speaking, there's no such thing as empty space. What appears for us to be empty space, the space between me and this camera, the space between you and I, is not empty space. It's actually filled and overflowing with atoms and molecules and activity. Well, metaphysically speaking, when we forgive, we create a space that must then be filled by law. And this is one of the re many reasons why we must learn, embrace, and practice the principle of forgiveness. This is how you get <laughs> to what you want. You gotta create the space for it. See, unforgiveness takes up space. Forgiveness creates space, and love fills the space. 
And so today, as we're talking about forgiveness, I want to focus on forgiveness in a very specific way. I want to focus on a very specific type of forgiveness, and that's self-forgiveness. You've heard us say it many times in sermons, meditations, and prayers. We forgive ourselves and we set ourselves free. I forgive myself and I set myself free. We have admonished you to forgive yourself and set yourself free. But have you set yourself free? Have you forgiven yourself? Have you released yourself of shame and guilt? Have you stopped persecuting yourself? Have you stopped depreciating and rejecting yourself? See, we hear a lot of talk about forgiving others and often that can appear to be difficult, particularly because of the circumstances of what happened, particularly because you still feel wrong and, and, and you want other people to ag agree that indeed you were wrong. Uh, it can just feel really hard to forgive others and that's okay. What I've learned and what I know to be true is that one way to master any principle is to first understand it on the most personal level. And so you may not be able or ready to forgive your parents or an ex-lover or an old boss or some other person who harmed or wronged you in some way, and that's okay. Because if you learn to forgive yourself, then you will be able to practice forgiveness for others. It's that reciprocal, as you give, you receive. And so as you're able to give this, this beautiful gift to yourself, you will receive that gift from others, but then it supports you in actually being able to give that gift to others in the right time, in the right way, in the right place. So let's start with self-forgiveness. And of course, as the famous In Vogue song says, free your mind and the rest will follow. So let's free our minds today. If you're ready to do that, you can give me a yes, yes in the comments, a thumbs up, a heart, a smiley face, whatever you want. Let's free our minds today. And so as we think about self-forgiveness and as we ground ourselves in the principle of forgiveness, we have to start with something that's incredibly foundational. It's, it's radical. <laughs> it's something that most people aren't talking about. It's something that we've been saying over and over and over here at CSC for the past 11 years and will continue for 11 more years or until PY and I leave this planet. This radical understanding comes to us through A Course in Miracles, but it is also echoed in Paul's letter to the Roman church. Now in A Course in Miracles, lesson 46, God is the love in which I forgive, we read these radical words. God does not forgive because God has never condemned. And there must be condemnation before forgiveness is necessary. I'm going to read that again because it is so radical that you may think you heard it, <laughs> but it's saying something that is earth shattering. God does not forgive because God has never condemned and there must be condemnation before forgiveness is necessary. Now in the letter to the Roman church, Paul's letter, we read something very simple. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, within the uh, traditional Christian theological context, that, that particular verse is written, this idea of who are in Christ Jesus, it's like those of us who are separated, those of us who are saved. If you grew up in my tradition, saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, right? But this is not a, a, a statement about separation, right? Those who are in Christ Jesus, metaphysically, and in and, and truth, even as Paul was really writing, we have enough evidence to know that Paul, much of his writing was actually Gnostic. Um, we recognize that those who are in Christ Jesus simply means those who recognize and acknowledge the power and the presence of Christ within them. 
those who are endeavoring to uh, walk as Jesus the Christ walked, endeavoring to live as Jesus the Christ lived, to believe and act as Jesus the Christ lived. And the, the Christ is something that is, it, it dwells within us. Let's come back to, to some of this foundational uh, teaching when we understand that um, Jesus the Christ was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is the house of bread, right? And of course, we would consider our stomachs to be the house of bread. And, and that is uh, the location of the, the solar plexus, right? The light, the sun, right? This is why all these words about Jesus or, or the Christ, those words Christ and Christos all point back to light. So the truth is all of us are in Christ, all of us possess the power and the presence of Christ, uh, but we do not all acknowledge this presence. We do not all live from this presence. And so those that have chosen this spiritual path, that's why I say welcome to the spiritual path, you indeed are uh, operating in through and as the Christ. You indeed have illuminated and activated your solar plexus. You know who and whose you are. And there is therefore now no condemnation for all of us not for one group over another, there's no condemnation. And so this is a powerful awareness. This is a freeing and game-changing truth. God does not condemn, and there is no condemnation. And so what this says to us then is that any ideas about uh, condemnation and unforgiveness and shame and guilt, this is a human problem and a human construct. This is our mess and our stuff. They ain't got nothing to do with God. It ain't got nothing to do with the all that is. God doesn't forgive because God doesn't condemn. God doesn't even see us, um, the all that is, or interact with us or think of us, if you will, in the way that we do as humans. And one of the ways that human beings has, has uh, messed up in terms of talking about God, and, and unfortunately, so much of the biblical account uh, um, leads us down this path, is making God human. God gets mad. God smites this one, and God puts fire on this one, and God gets mad at that one and puts him in the belly of the whale. And, but that's not how God, the all in all, operates. That's how God made in man's image <laughs> operates. That's how the Greek gods operate, right? And all of these other gods uh, uh, that, that have been created according to human understanding and being given uh, human attributes, anthropomorphized. But that is not how God operates. See, this giving and receiving that I talk about here with forgiveness is not about God forgiving us. God being love is actually the container by which we are able to practice forgiveness and move through the process of forgiveness. God is, if you will, holding space for us, patiently waiting for each and every one of us to release shame, guilt, self-rejection, self-condemnation, and self-persecution. In fact, as soon as we release those things, love rushes in to fill the space. I said that earlier. I said that that unforgiveness takes up space. Forgiveness creates space and love fills the space. And so this is the beautiful radical message then as we read in A Course in Miracles that God is the love in which we forgive. It is inviting us to understand that God, the all in all in which we live, move and have our being is this beautiful, loving container by which we're able to make mistakes <laughs> and remedy those mistakes. By the way, sin, that's all sin is just a mistake. That's literally the, the best translation of the word, an error, a mistake. And so as soon as we release any of those things, love rushes in to fill the space. This is echoed in the parable of the prodigal son. I, I love, love, love that this, this parable for so many reasons because it, it teaches us this. The father in that story represents mother, father, God. It represents the principle of God. And there was no con condemnation and there was actually no forgiveness. The forgiveness happened when the prodigal son came to himself, had an awareness, and chose to go home. Self-forgiveness. And then we read in the story, he makes his way home, and the word is so clear. It says, but while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. We know further in the story, it says, put a ring on his finger, put the best clothes on him. 
And see, this is what we don't understand. The, the brother who was pissed off and didn't understand, why are you giving him this money and you, you shouldn't let him have all, all of this stuff. See, that's the person that thinks that this thing is about morality. Thinks about, oh, I'm following the rules. I'm doing the right thing. I'm crossing um, every T and dotting every I. And so I deserve this. I deserve that. You're worthy. You were born worthy. It's not about what you do or what you don't do. And forgiveness, then, is not about following a set of rules. Again, the father in this story represents the principle of mother, father, God. All the prodigal son did was turn in the direction of home. And before he got home, he was affirmed. Before he got home, he was loved. Because again, God is the love in which we forgive. It is the container that then rushes in and fills the space when we create the space. Nature abhors a vacuum. Something must be filled. Forgiveness removes shame, guilt, resentment, persecution, condemnation. This is the principle in story form. God does not forgive because God does not condemn. God is love and love does not and cannot condemn. Love is the container that holds us even in our unforgiveness. Love is the container that holds us even as we harbor guilt, shame, and hold ourselves in a mental prison. Love rushes in to fill the empty space the moment we release ourselves and set ourselves free. And so then we must deal with the title of this sermon, Forgive and Forget. In fact, it's one of the, the, in the, the, one of the song lyrics, and there's a heal, healing going on. Uh, Jamie Luller writes, uh, let's learn to forgive, but not to forget. God knows we've got to try. We've often heard the term forgive and forget. And this is actually an impossible task. It is impossible because Many people, uh, and it is impossible task um, because many people run as far away from forgiveness because there's no way. It's like if I'm supposed to forgive and supposedly forget, how does that work? I can't forget the abuse that I experienced. I can't forget the harm that I experienced. I can't forget um, the way I was judged, the way I was wronged, uh, the way I was othered. I can't forget um, the ways I, would I was treated. Forgive and forget? Hell no. I saw, um, as I was scrolling through Instagram this week, I saw a video of a, a woman who was speaking from that very perspective. She was like, I will never forget the, the, the I think it was her ex-husband who was a narcissistic abuser. I'm like, I'm not going to forgive him. I never will. And she was very clear. She was like, and I'm okay with that. And I think that it partially has to do with her misunderstanding of the principle of forgiveness. But it is an impossible task to forget no one can literally forget the events of their life. Yes, we remember those moments and in some cases wish we could forget. But again, that is just not possible. But the title of this sermon is Forgive and Forget. Taking in what I just said, knowing that it is impossible to forget the events and situations and experiences, why would I still offer this to you today? Well, I'm not asking you to forget the events. I'm not asking you to forget the situation that occurred. I'm not asking you to forget the experience that you had. Today, I'm asking you to forget the guilt. Mm, take a breath. I'm asking you to forget the shame. I'm asking you to forget the self-punishment. I'm asking you to forget the self-deprecation, the self-rejection, the self-condemnation. I'm asking you to forget these things today. And taking us full circle, I want to take you to the Science of Living Guide, Reverend Ike, and hear these words as he writes about forgiveness. As long as you have that guilt in your mind, it's going to draw punishment to you. And it will draw punishment to you from sources and from people that seem completely unconnected to you. Guilt in the mind can draw punishment in so many different ways that you won't have the slightest idea what the cause is. And I wanna hear this, when you hear punishment, anything that is unwanted, 
because what's what's really happening uh, if we are condemning self then we begin to attract experiences into our life that reflect mm-hmm I'm not worthy mm-hmm I'm wrong Mm-hmm, I'm a piece of blank because of what I did. Mm-hmm, those mistakes I made were unforgivable. And so that's why I'm experiencing um, this out in the world. That's why I'm being seemingly punished out here in the world, right? That's why these unwanted things are happening to me. I used to live in that dichotomy, that binary. Oh, I did these things wrong and now these bad things are happening in my life. And that just created more shame. That created more guilt because there's something outside of me that's punishing me. There's something outside of me that's reminding me of the mistakes I made. That's reminding me of the regrets I have. That's reminding me and reflecting my own inner self-talk about myself. I'm not talking about something that I heard or something that I read. I'm talking about something that I lived. That's why I can share this with you today. This is a reflection of inner guilt and shame. And you won't have the slightest idea what the cause is. But I can tell you today what the remedy is. Self-forgiveness. Reverend Knight goes on and writes, forgive yourself for your past mistakes and forget them. Stop judging and condemning yourself for the sins. What do we say sin is? Mistakes you believe you have committed. After all, who hasn't done things that they regret? This is a part of life. And again, this is what's beautiful when we understand the idea that God is the love in which we forgive, that we're actually living in this container of love. Again, we're living, moving, and having our being in this container of love that gives us the opportunity to make mistakes over and over and over again and never be held uh, to account uh, for them. That there's grace, there's compassion, there's love, there's empathy. Love does not condemn. Love does not judge. The, 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 the teaching, the scripture says, love holds no record of wrongs. Corinthians, love is patient, love is kind. Holds no record of wrongs. And thank God for that because again, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to do things that we regret. We're going to do things that don't reflect our best self. But it's time to forgive and forget. Forget that shame. Forget that guilt. Forget that self-punishment. Forget that self-condemnation. Forgive yourself and set yourself free. He goes on. In order to be <laughs> what you want to be, do uh, what you want to be, do what you want to do, and have what you want to have, you must look to the God in you for the strength you need to forgive and forget your past mistakes and recognize the truth of you, your divine self that never sins. Course in Miracles teaches us that our sinlessness is guaranteed by God. This power and presence that's within us is sinless. I love it so interesting that here, uh, Reverend Ike says, we must look to God in us, not God out of, outside of us, not something out here to, to glow down on us and say, oh, I forgive you. I know you didn't mean it. No, 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 no. Because God doesn't condemn what we're doing when we forgive is realigning ourselves with God, realigning ourselves with love, realigning ourselves with peace, realigning ourselves with that presence and power that knows no condemnation. What did the, what did the text say, Apostle Paul? There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. For those that, those that know, and, and here's the other thing, Apostle Paul is the one that wrote Christ in you, the hope of glory. So when we hear this idea of Christ Jesus, we're not, we, we recognize that his teaching is not talking about something outside of you. Paul writes Christ in you. We must look to God in us for the strength we need to forgive and forget our past mistakes. Forgive and forget. Forgive and forget, forgive and forget, forget the shame, forget the guilt, forget the resentment, the self-punishment, the self-condemnation, forget the self-persecution. Forgiveness is a spiritual tool that rests and relies on the same principles that we use to manifest and demonstrate what it is that we want to be, do, or have. And interestingly enough, unforgiveness may be the thing that is holding back, acting as an unwanted dam to the river of life that is seeking to flow in through and as your life. As we would give, we receive. Forgiveness is another reflection of this principle. 
And another way that we can understand the, the working of this principle is by working it in this way. Giving ourselves forgiveness. Giving ourselves grace. Giving ourselves compassion and love and empathy. Giving ourselves another chance. Choosing not to view ourselves through our mistakes. Choosing not to view ourselves through our regrets. Choosing not to view ourselves from the times when we were not our best selves. And then we have the principle, nature abhors a vacuum. Just as you have learned to create space for something new in your life, I'm reminded uh, Catherine Ponder, she talks about this idea, you may want a new wardrobe, you may want new clothes, we're moving into spring, you may be thinking about your spring and summer fits, I know I have been. And one of the principles that you can do to kind of, to act as if, is to begin to start to empty your closet. She tells a wonderful story about this. Maybe you want to start giving things away, right? And you're creating space. We know how to do that. We understand the principle. Well, just as you do that, you create that space and begin to imagine, see your closet with the clothes that you desire. See your closet. Imagine yourself with the, the, the outfits you want for your summer vacations, whatever it may be. In the same way, forgiveness works. But this is a mental and emotional release, which makes space for the inner reality that demonstrates then peace, love, joy, happiness, good health. And when you have those things, work it on the inside. <laughs> then that thing begins to work on the outside. Then we understand that forgiveness is for us, not for God. That forgiveness is something that's happening on the human plane. It's only necessary on the human plane, right? On the, on the highest level, on the, the, the metaphysical level, on that, that level where, where the all in all is, where there is absolute oneness, there's no need for forgiveness because ain't no condemnation there. At the level of love, there's no need for, condom, for forgiveness because love holds no record of wrongs. But here on this human level, unfortunately, we've learned and taught to hold records of wrongs. It's built into our systems. We learn it as children uh, and we, it, it's reinforced when we go to school. <laughs> right, carrying that record with us from grade to grade. Uh, and, and many times, even as we move into certain jobs, um, whatever our school record may be, it's still um, being used or held against us in some way. But this is not how God operates. This is not how love operates. Most of those systems are completely unloving. Most of those systems have been created by and for the ego. God does not forgive because God being love does not and cannot condemn. A Course in Miracles teaches us that God is the love in which we forgive. And love rushes in to fill the new space we have created through the practice of forgiveness. Finally, the admonition to forgive and forget is not a request to erase your memory. That's not possible. And that may be the reason why you haven't um, tried to forgive yourself. Because you're like, I can't forget what I did. It was terrible. I can't forget how I showed up. It was terrible. I can't forget that mistake I made. It was awful. I can't forget what I said. I, I can't forget um, how I mistreated someone. I'm not asking you to erase your memory. Instead, it is an invitation to release the thoughts and feelings that may be causing you to suffer. Forget the shame, forget the guilt, forget the self-persecution, forget, forget the self-condemnation, forget the self-rejection. Release yourself, forgive yourself, and set yourself free. Right here and right now, put the focus of your attention on you and your freedom. There are things that you are holding against yourself. There are mistakes you've made that until today you have not been willing to let go of. These, these are the things that are taking up space in your heart and mind and blocking the life that you say you desire. Nature abhors a vacuum, but it cannot fill unoccupied I mean, occupied space. You're declaring what you will be, do, and have, and life is now saying to you, I'm ready, willing, and able to bring all of this and more into your life but you have to make room for it. Forgiveness of self makes room for that which you desire right here and right now. Release all guilt right here and right now. Release all shame right here and right now. Break the shackles and open the prison doors. 
right here and right now. Step into the sunshine of your mind right here and right now. Step into the light of love right here and right now. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Release yourself and set yourself free to this truth. We say amen. Ashe. And so it is. And so it is. Yes, yes. Forgive and forget. This message is should be one of those messages that you keep in your tool toolkit. Mm -hmm. One of those ideas, concepts that you practice daily with yourself. Mm -hmm. Forgive and forget. The other F, it yields freedom. Hey, hey. All right with the F words. Yes, All yes. All right with the F words. <laughs> It brings freedom. Many times we hold on to the stories, the experiences, because we can't even imagine ourselves being forgiven. Mm -hmm. We just hold it. We just hold on to the incident. We try to put the blame out there when it's really us that is holding it. Lord have mercy. Add this sermon, this concept, these teachings to your toolkit because you're out here trying to get things mm. to fill up the void mm. in yourself that's actually already occupied by unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You keep thinking, I'm going to get this, get this, it's going to make me worthy. Mm. I'm going to get this, do this, have this person, it's going to make me worthy. Mm. It's mm. not. Nope. Forgive yourself and set yourself free. That opens up the way. Yes, it does. And then those things come to you. <clears throat> yes. You ain't got to hustle and grind to get them. No. no. Add this message. Mm -hmm. Add this truth. Mm -hmm. Live this truth mm -hmm. for yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Set yourself free. Yeah. Forgiveness is here mm -hmm. as a tool on this human plane. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we know from our own experience mm -hmm. how powerful it can be. Absolutely. Thank you, PG. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Well, beautiful people, it is time for giving. You've seen the information throughout the sermon and, and earlier in the in this broadcast. It's very easy to give to CSC. You can go to our website, celebrationsc.org forward slash give and give your dollar amount. Or you can text to give 347-744-9500. There is a $10 minimum to text to give. Uh, whichever method you choose to give, that's excuse me, all good. But what's most important is the consciousness behind your giving, right? And uh, similarly, as I talked about forgiveness not being about, you know, being nice or kind or spiritual or a moral thing to do, that giving is not about that, right? Mm -hmm. One, giving is a spiritual practice. It actually supports us in understanding and learning the law of circulation. And CSC is a space where you get to practice that law of circulation, mm -hmm. knowing the truth that as, as you give, you receive, mm -hmm. not the amount of money you give, you receive, but the consciousness behind your giving, mm -hmm. that's what you will receive. That's what you're actually planting in consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that you give what feels good. And what feels good is that giving that is free of shame, that is free of guilt, that is free of obligation, that is free of the old stories. I, I was uh, sharing with PY uh, last week, I think it was, uh, re remembering a, a former church that in the business meetings every quarter, they read what each person gave for that quarter. Right? <laughs> Some of the loudest people in the room, you would find out, hadn't given much of anything. Um, mm -hmm. Others, you were surprised what they had given, but it creates a mess. Mm -hmm. right? It creates judgment because you don't know any everybody's life. You don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. And then and so then it creates a sense of guilt and shame because you wish you could give more, but you're not able to. And now everybody knows or, you know, you may have lost your job and nobody knows. Uh, it also creates competition, <laughs> which is not giving what feels good. We could go on and on with all the things that it creates that that's problematic. 
that's why the consciousness behind our giving, it becomes so, so important. We talk yeah. about these, we spend time every Sunday talking about giving from this perspective to help mm -hmm. you let go of those that conditioning that we've all mm -hmm. been subjected to. Mm -hmm. We don't spend time talking about giving to get you to give more. No. We, get, we talk about giving to set you free mm -hmm. from how you've been trained to think about giving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about it every week. Mm -hmm. We've done that since day one. We yeah. knew it was an equally as important as any message, any mm -hmm. meditation, any yeah. music, yeah. that you understand how it really works yeah. and that you give what feels good. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And that's why we talk about it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. To get comfortable with it, yeah. to undo what we've been told about mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to yeah. normalize this idea of spiritual circulation in the form of money. Exactly. 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 And so from this place of awareness, then we can affirm with confidence this spiritual truth. All the money that I use. All the money that I use. Returns to me multiplied. Returns to me multiplied. In a never ending cycle. In a never ending cycle. Of increase. Of increase. And enjoyment. And enjoyment. To that we say amen. Amen. Ashe. Ashe. And so it is. So it is. So it is. Well, we are grateful for each and every one of you. We're, we're mindful of the time. It is, let's see, 32 minutes uh, past the hour. Mm. So we will be beginning uh, right on time with the God Talk at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, for those of you that are interested, let me put that back up on the screen. Uh, uh, for our first time guests, if you're not on our mailing list, text the word welcome to this phone number, 347-472-1078. You'll receive a link click that link into your information you must include your email address submit you'll receive another text that says you're all set and then go to your inbox and you'll see an email with the god talk information for those of you that are on our mailing list there's an email that goes out every friday just look for friday's email uh, from celebration spiritual center scroll down and you will see the god talk information we look forward to mm -hmm. uh, you all joining us there and and um tapping into that vibration it's going to be wonderful it's going to be good if you're not able to join us for the god talk this month uh, we trust that you will have an amazing remainder of your sunday and an even better week uh, make a note set the intention to join us uh, wednesday morning at 7 a.m eastern standard time for the momentum prayer call and then we will gather together again for the first sunday of spring Next Sunday, uh, as we continue the, our series, Welcome to the Spiritual Path, as we continue to deepen uh, our meditation, recognizing that we are the light, as we continue uh, to move forward in consciousness, growing in love, uh, with love, as love. We love and appreciate you all, and we will see you very soon. All right? Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs>